Hey guys, in this video, I'll be showing you how to use Vivid's new BioPulse Hextent as an option to do a Chrome delete to change your Chrome into something like this in the pictures. So to start off with, make sure that your grill is cleaned very well. I used isopropyl alcohol and that you have a piece cut out. Again, this is Vivid. Um, it's their new 2020 release BioPulse uh, headlight and taillight tint in um, light smoke. Um, you can see there I have a strip already cut and that I'm going to be doing this top bar on the hood part itself. So I peeled out the backing, just got it laid out there and making sure I have covers left and right and I'm anchoring the center there as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is because that bar has a slight bend to it, I'm going to basically give it a slight stretch uh, pulling. You can see I'm giving it some tension there towards the left side and bending it around that bar, um, the bar and the curvature of that bar there. Part of the reason why I'm doing that particular stretch is so that it will also, if I give it a little bit of heat, hug underneath the uh, the silver um, grill piece there on, on the hood itself. So I'm doing the same thing on the other side there, just making it to the end. I wasn't happy with how that one laid down, so I pulled it back up and am reapplying it. One of the great things about this new BioPulse Hex Tint, and actually any of the new Hex Tints that uh, Vivid has released uh, this year in particular, is they seem to have changed their adhesive where it's very low tack, whereas their previous generations of um, headlight and taillight tints were very sticky on the adhesive. So if they touched anything or grabbed, it was uh, it stuck on pretty well. This stuff is very low tack, so I was able to pull up very easily, as you saw. So now that I had it laid down, all I did was basically use my squeegee in my hand to uh, smooth down the vinyl and tuck it into the top part and then tuck it under the bottom part there and now you can see I'm working at a corner there so I hit it with a little bit of heat as you saw I had that heat gun and now that it shrank back and is a little bit soft because of the heat I'm molding it in and around that corner and tucking it into that edge between the hood and the um, chrome bar uh, on the edge of the hood there so now that I'm satisfied that I got it in I'm going to touch it with a little bit more heat to make sure everything shrunk down and around and then I'm good with that side and so now I'm going to hit this left side or this other side here, uh, passenger side. Doing the same thing, hit it with some heat to kind of shrink it out since I did have some tension there. And then once it shrunk out and relaxed, I'm just molding it in using my squeegee and a micro squeegee as well. Sorry my big head is blocking the view, but I basically did the same thing as on the other side, molding that around. Using my micro squeegee now that I've got that corner tucked in to make sure that I have a good tuck on the top side there. Um, in preparation for cutting. So I'm taking my utility knife there with a 30 degree blade and cutting uh, in between the top of the bar and the bottom of the hood just floating that blade using the um, top of the hood or excuse me the underside of the hood as my guide uh, with the flat side of the blade pressed up against it so that um, I have a good clean straight cut there. Going across the top coming around the sides you saw that when I got down to the corners I kind of didn't stop or I didn't kind of I did not stop all the way down there and kind of and cut away. Now I took away the top piece there that's been trimmed out um, and so the next step is to make sure that everything's tucked in nicely and tightly. Um, I went to go put a, a few things away. I'm going to lift this up now um, to get the other side. So give me a second here as you um, as I put the prop up, I'm going to point this up towards the uh, towards the hood now, and you can see that some of the vinyl did go underneath there. Um, there's a natural seam in that bottom part of the bar there, uh, and you'll see me kind of work that. But basically, what I'm doing now is make sure everything is tucked in nice and tightly um, and uniformly underneath. And I'm addressing the corners there, while now I can see the underneath part of it. So just using my squeegee to mold that around. And then using my squeegee to flatten down the vinyl, roll it around the edge there, flatten it down. Looks like I might have creased it just a little bit there, so I'm popping it back up. And then squeegeeing it down using the hard edge of my squeegee in that particular case. And then now my finger just to smooth it down so that it has good contact and adheres very well to the surface. Now I'm giving again a little touch of heat there on the underside to make things relax a little bit and get it um, rolled under and conformed on that corner and then I'll work the underside there as you can see. So I'm basically just setting everything up in preparation for cutting which you'll see in just a minute here. Alright, now I'm taking my micro squeegee and using that to define um, the lines. Again, there's a, there's a seam in there that you can't see in this view but there's a seam in there. I'm just running my micro squeegee along that seam to define 
the line that I'll be using to cut um, cut and trim trim off the vinyl. Now I could have gone full coverage all the way underneath to the silver part underneath there, but again, this is under the hood. I'm only gonna lift it up. You know, and you're only gonna see it when you lift it up. And then as long as I have a nice clean even bar, if you will, underneath there, um, it looks nice, or in my opinion, it will look nice and clean. So basically I'm just um, using my knife to score the vinyl, um, using that seam in there as my guide, I'm trying to take my time. I did have a little bit of hard time um, at one point because since I'm looking up and you can kind of tell that my, my bulbs, my garage lighting is directly above me, there's points where I was staring almost straight into the bulb and so I lost sight of the seam and then I didn't get a good feel for it so I had to stop there for a second as you saw, pick up the blade and reposition myself again. So I reached the bottom edge there, got to the corner, trimming it out, peeled off that bottom part. So you can see now I have a nice clean line there. And again, I'm leaving a little excess on the corners um, so that I can then just mold that stuff, mold it around uh, and make it nice and clean. So now I have that done, I'm putting the hood back down. I'm gonna reposition the camera for you here. And you can see that bar is practically wrapped. I just have to address the corners on each side there, which I'm going to do next here. So I'm just taking my micro squeegee and finding um, where it is and tucking where the excess might be, tucking it in my micro squeegee. And then once I've got that molded around the corner to my liking, just taking the tip of my knife and trimming off whatever is left on the excess there. And then I'm gonna go and do ahead and do the same thing on the other side here. Tucked it in with micro squeegee, found some of the excess using the back of the blade excuse me, the back of the thing as my guide, and cut, and it is done. On to the center part of the grill here. You can see I have a piece already cut out, so take care of that small bar there, and I place it on, making sure I have coverage left and right. Um, camera went out there for a second, but basically um, I just laid down the center piece, and now because it has a bend on the top, kind of drape, drape them over, and then a bend underneath, uh, I'm making a relief cut just past the flat end of the um, of the grill there, maybe about a millimeter past it or two millimeters past it. And basically what I've done is created two tabs, one that goes over the top and one that goes on under the bottom. As you can see now the, the vinyl folds over instead of bending up there. Um, now why I cut there is because I'm going to flush cut the sides of the grill bar um, and then underneath as well because I'm not going to spend the time to tuck it on the inside there because it's hard to get in one it's hard to get in there nicely and cleanly and two um, you can't really even see it when everything's tucked in it's right in the shadow so what I'm doing now is now that I've got everything tucked in I'm using it with some heat I'm hitting it with the heat to make sure everything settles down and settles in in preparation for cutting and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm set up and I'm flush cutting so I have the side of my blade against the inside flat edge of that grill bar and cutting down Pull up the excess, be careful not to rip it, just in case, and then cut off some of that excess there. And then now I'm just gonna use that plastic um, guide on the, that the silver piece goes into, all the way to the end there. Cut away that piece there, take away the excess. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Um, well actually, I'm gonna take my squeegee here first, make sure everything's tucked in nice and tightly the, on the part that I just cut there. And then I'm gonna do a flush cut again on the side of the uh, other side of the bar, grill bar there and again it's just the side of my blade against the side of the grill bar so I have a guide and then I'm just slight you know carefully slicing down now what I'm doing is I'm flush cutting underneath as well on the underneath of the grill bar and so I'm just rounding off the corner and then again side of my blade on the underneath of the grill bar and you can see I'm pulling a little bit of tension to keep the bundle taut so that the cut is nice and clean and straight so I'm going to hit it, everything with a little bit of heat to make sure everything is settled down no air bubbles that I missed, um, and that those corner edges, you know, they seal down onto the um, onto the surface of the grill. All right, that side's done. So basically, I'm going to repeat the exact same thing on this side here. Make sure my piece will fit. Put some of my stuff away, and then peel the um, peel the vinyl from the backing paper, and I lay down the center because it's got the high ridge point right there. I'm gonna make my relief cut on that side there, just past the um, end of the point there, and then on this side here. That way, I create my top half, my top tab, and my bottom tab. I'm gonna lay down 
looks like the top tab here first, tucking it into that plastic um, retainer piece on the top side, and then the, the front flat, and then underneath, or the front flat, which then goes a little bit underneath as well. Again, I didn't wrap underneath because nobody ever sees under there, and it's tucked away in a shadow. Using my micro squeegee to make sure everything's tucked in nice and tightly in preparation for cutting. Um, hit it with some heat to make sure everything shrinks down, nothing, I missed anything, any air bubbles. Um, kind of just making sure I'm setting everything up for those flush cuts that I'm going to do next. Here. Alright, again, same thing. I'm going to, uh, looks like I'm going to flush cut that side right there. Again, side of the blade against the side of that grill bar and then slice uh, slice down. Make sure your blade has been snapped off the new snap blade and then uh, so that's the sharpest it can be so that the um, that the knife cuts the uh, cuts the vinyl nice and smoothly without grabbing or chattering or it because it's a little bit dull. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side there. Taking my um, uh, rounding off the corner there and then sliding underneath or slicing underneath again side of my blade is pushing up against the underside of the grill I'm trying I gotta add just a little bit of tension there to make sure everything stays taut as I'm uh, as I'm cutting so it's a nice clean smooth even cut and then cut the top part there and I have that natural guide right there a seam that I can use to cut that so the grill bars are for all intents and purposes done now hit it with a little heat to make sure everything is settled down see if there's anything to move I missed any air bubbles and then use my micro squeegee tool to tuck everything down nice and tightly here so I got the top bar done and then the two center grill bars completed so far as well all right next gonna get that u-shaped lower bar lower grill piece there so I got a piece big enough to cover left, right, and just big enough to go up, down. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. This stuff, if you haven't noticed, it's dry application and applies just like regular vinyl, despite it being labeled as um, a uh, as a headlight tint. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just making sure I have everything, or I'm setting up the vinyl on the flat surfaces of the uh, um, the grill there and I'm anchoring it down and then on that's on the other side and on this side I'm giving it just a little bit of stretch uh, towards that um, the side that I'm at right now and then sealing it down on the flat side there now that I have that side done, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side I'm taking it off of the um, it's the the uh, badge is a high point so it's grabbing on that but uh, just pop it right off of that um, one of the great things about the new Biopoles and the hexagonal tints is their low tack application. They're low tack and low initial tack, uh, so it's not quite as grabby and as hard. Um, uh, and I can pull it up again. This this lays just like regular vinyl. Um, super easy to use, guys. Um, it looks great. The only thing you have to worry about is making sure you don't put your fingers underneath the vinyl where you will actually be applying it to. That's why I have excess, because my fingers are underneath that part, but all those parts are gonna get cut away. So as you can see next, I'm just tucking everything in on that outside edge there uh, in preparation for cutting. Um, you can see I had, uh, uh, on, the, on the center part there, I had barely enough to cover the bottom part there. Um, and I saw everything, I, I tucked everything in. At the top corner there, you can see I'm going to make a relief cut so that I can tuck everything in well and then I can also address going over the top because I do have a flat plateau at the top of that grill bar there as well. So now I'm taking my um, my micro squeegee making sure everything's tucked. Uh, there's a point where there was some sticking out and I used my micro squeegee and it pushed everything in uh, and tucked underneath at least in particular in the center part there. And so what I'm doing now is I'm going to trim off the underneath piece of the vinyl that is hugging underneath the um, lower part of the lower um, u-shaped piece of the grill there you can see i'm just making sure everything's nice and tucked so i have a good cut line ready to go get my knife put it underneath so between the um, grill piece itself and the bumper piece trimming up alongside using that as my guide using the grill side as my guide and then cutting that over I'm going to do the same to the other side, make sure everything's ready to go, nice and tucked in. 
using my micro squeegee. If you don't have a micro squeegee, I'd recommend getting one. Aside from just a regular squeegee, they're very handy to have and can uh, help you tuck into very tight spaces. So again, just trimming everything out using the underside as my guide. Trimming off the excess piece there. And then going back to the other side, tucking everything in all the way through the part that I've already cut. Now making sure before I finish cutting that, everything is tucked in nice and tightly using my micro squeegee. So now I'm going to go ahead and essentially do the same thing. I'm making a relief cut towards the corner top there. And I'm going to cut using the, uh, put the blade in between the bumper and the side of that grill there, using the side of the grill as my cut guide. And there you go, peeled it off. So the bottom part is essentially done. So I'm making my, using my micro squeegee to tuck everything in. Now what I'm going to do is because I have a high point of the badge, I'm going to make a relief cut, cut those, cut out that center section of the, that's covering the middle of the grill because I don't need that piece. I'm going to use it a little bit later to, uh, to use to wrap the ring, silver ring trim piece around the badge itself. But right now, because it's grabbing on the high point of the badge, it is just causing trouble. Now you can see that I'm cutting this away to really get it off the badge, but I'm leaving just enough excess to cover the top part of the grill to fold it over. And there what I did was just check to make sure I'll be able to fully wrap the uh, trim, the silver trim rim of the of the uh, badge itself. So now you saw I just gave a little bit of heat across a broad area there and I'm just to soften the vinyl. And then what I'm going to do is while it's soft and more malleable, I'm just working that vinyl into that U-shaped curve there. Um, I didn't, give, I'm not really stretching. I just gave a little bit of heat to soften it up. There will be just a little bit of stretch, but it's so much. In this case, really, I'm, I'm stretching. I am um, heated that big, broad area, as you saw, so that when I do push in towards the center of the U, the lowest part of the U, it's pulling from the other parts of the vinyl as well, so that it's not all stretched. The stretch is not all concentrated right in that U part. So once I reach the inner plastic, uh, the inner plastic piece there, as you can see, I'm just using my squeegee to tuck it in. I'm pulling the vinyl forward a little bit to do a tuck and cut, so basically releasing tension, um, and then to cut to uh, tuck it in uh, so that I know that it's not stretched in and it's been fed in. And I'm just using my micro squeegee to make sure everything's tucked in nice and tight because I want to make sure I have a good tuck for a good uh, clean tuck and cut. So there I just made a relief cut um, at the corner point and then I'm just again floating the blade uh, in between the silver chrome piece of the grill and the black plastic piece that's holding that silver chrome piece. So <clears throat> making it almost to the other side and I just want to double check that I had, I'm tucking, uh, lifting and tucking everything in. So I'm feeding it into that little groove there um, and then continue my cut there. I just wanted to make sure I have a good clean, good coverage and a good clean line for cutting. You can see once I get to the corner top, I cut away and out versus towards the top of that grill piece there. Peel off the excess and there you go. That lower bar is for all intents and purposes fully wrapped. Just have to tuck things in, make sure everything is set. Um, you can see I'm using my micro squeegee to make sure everything is tucked in nice and tightly there as well. All right, so getting that piece of vinyl off. So then the next part I can do is lift up the hood and address the top part of the, the grill piece, which is a flat plateau kind of, um, kind of area. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a tuck and, or a cut and fold. So there's one piece on the inside of the U that you can see that I'm working with there. Once I get my stuff put together and I'm going to make a, a cut, um, at a shallow angle up. Now I'm moving that one of the flaps away and then tucking that piece onto an over. And then I'm going to score it to make just a nice clean line there, um, just over the edge of the um, top of the plateau there. Take away the excess. As you can see, it's a very small sliver. And then next, you see that flap that's up there. I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer to show you what I did. So you can see that small sliver of vinyl that I had wrapped over the top and then trimmed away and left that small sliver there. Now I'm going to take that remaining sliver and then basically wrap, you know, fold that over the top and then wrap that and then trim it all so that it looks nice and clean. So you can see I've, I put it down nice and flat, then I can see where I have the overlap there and I'm giving a nice clean trim. 
And then there's some black plastic I can use in the back as a guide and then the side of the grill on that part of the flat and it's nice and clean so I'm gonna pull up the camera so you can see nice and closely nice clean and flat there you see just a hair of an overlap but you're not gonna see that um, unless you're really really up close and looking for it so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side there uh, I'm gonna make a cut here once I got everything tucked and set up that way I create two flaps one flap will then uh, pull one you know move one out of the way pull one over and it's gonna be basically essentially towards me um, pulling it to the left if you will and I'm just kind of make sure I have everything cleaned up and cut properly um, and then wrap the, just a little bit of the edge there just like I did in the last side and then the other one I'm wrapping straight down towards towards the back of the car and towards maybe towards the um, the driver's side a little bit flattening everything out setting everything up for a good uh, tuck and cut and then trim off the axis here which I'm about to do so on that side there's between the bumper and the grill and then that top part is a grill plastic and then on the um, inside of the U piece there at the top uh, I will do just a quick not a quick but a light scoring and create a line there so I do have a little bit of overlap which is good because that top piece will then hold down the bottom piece and it's all anchored together looks nice and clean all right so the u part u shape part of the grill is for all intents and purposes fully wrapped next step will be to address the, tr the silver trim ring around the badge there so what i've done is that piece that i had i split it in half and i was originally going to wrap, try to wrap it in one piece all the way around it was just bundling up too much and so i said no i'll just cut it in two pieces create a small seam and overlap which no one's ever going to see unless you're up close and personal and really looking for it and so you can see in there i have i'm addressing the bottom because i want to put the bottom first and then the top one that way when i do create the seam the seam is pointing down the edge of the seam is down facing downward and so i gave i wrapped underneath and gave it a pull, um, a left right horizontal stretch a little bit so that it hugs under there and once i've gotten to the corners and the edges there i'm just giving a little bit of heat to one shrink back that stretch and two help conform it around the left and right most part of the oval trim ring piece there so all i'm doing is you know tucking using my squeegee to tuck it in using my fingers to flatten everything out smooth everything out and then i'm tucking in on the sides there with my squeegee um, <clears throat> there's a natural line there as well uh, which I can use to underneath to um, and then you'll see it's kind of on the top side you'll see too um, what I'm doing is I'm trimming on the inside edge between the blue oval badge and the inside edge of the silver trim ring peeling using that as my guide to, um, cut away the excess on the inside covering the badge piece there go ahead uh, once that's fully cut peel it away <clears throat> excuse me and then zooming in just a little bit there um, cutting off on the side on the excess and then underneath I'm going to cut there's a line you can kind of see it on the top part of the circle there there's a line that I use as a guide now because it's underneath I just need a little bit of extra light putting on my fancy dancy headlight there so, um, so I could see the the guide uh, to get started so I can feel for it as well I'm just using that line as my guide underneath um, the trim. There, I, I did lose it a little bit again because I'm, I'm looking straight up and my uh, overhead lights are essentially right overhead of me. So um, uh, I was actually losing a little bit because I would look away towards the light just unintentionally and I, I'd lose sight of where I was and have to reposition the blade again. <clears throat> So now that I've got most of that trim, I'm just peeling away some of the excess, making sure my, my cut is good. Looks like I didn't cut quite all the way, so I'm going to make sure I address that properly. Um, and then trim off. Looks like I left a little sliver there, so I'm just going back and make sure everything's nice and clean. Good, good clean cut uh, to make it look nice um, and conform well around the silver trim ring. Continuing on with the cut up to the other side and boom the bottom half of that is for all intents and purposes done now for the top half same process what you'll see me doing is kind of tacking center and then i'm going to stretch it towards um, the right side in this case of the video 
then get it towards and I want it to go down and towards the old the uh, where the bottom part that I had just done in the last part meets and so I'm just giving it a horizontal stretch there that way on the across the top it it uh it hugs in I'm cutting off some of the excess because now it's just getting in the way and then making sure everything's nice and tight and tucked and then I'm going to just uh, mold the vo the vinyl around the uh, the trim ring there giving it just a little bit of heat to one shrink back the vinyl that it did give it a stretch and then while once that's done and shrunk back while it's soft and malleable because it's been heated I'm just going to mold the vinyl right around and cover the bottom um, uh, the bottom part of the vinyl that I had already laid same thing with the other side here just basically taking um, a little bit of heat to trigger the memory effect and shrink the vinyl back so that it hugs in a little bit better and then now while it's um, while it's warm just mold that vinyl in and around the, the corners and edges and tucking that in hit it with just a little bit more heat as it cooled off there and then tucking it in I'm not stretching anything I'm just again working it in and around the edges there so once I've got that done, I'm just going to hit everything with heat to make sure everything's set and is tucked in nicely. I'm not, it's not pulling back. I'm using my, my, my micro squeegee to tuck into the uh, black plastic trim there so that I can set up for a good tuck and cut. And then once I'm happy with that, give it some heat to make sure everything settles down. And then proceed to trim. Um, looks like I found something I wasn't quite satisfied yet with so just tucking that in excuse the big head there but basically what I'm going to be doing is putting the blade in between the um, silver trim ring behind the back of the silver trim ring and into where it meets the black holder trim ring if you will uh, you can see what I'm doing right there now got just a little extra light to help me see right where I'm cutting and then I'm gonna peel off that top part carefully in just a second here cut in half so I can just smaller parts because it looks like I might not have cut all the way through on that one side or on either side there so I'm just making sure everything's tucked in nicely so, um, so I can tuck it away now I'm just setting up the cutting away the inner part of the trim ring where the blue oval meets the um, the silver trim ring and just trimming that part out there there is a there is a small gap in there which is why I'm able to float the tip of my blade into that gap to address that and then pop that off all right and then finish trimming off the outer trim ring which looks like I did on that side and then I'm making sure I'm good on this on the other side you don't want to just rip things off thinking you've cut it all the way through because sometimes you might ha not have and if you just wantonly rip it off you'll pull off the vinyl that's um, been applied um, and sometimes you might stretch it too much try to heat it and it won't conform back to the original shape that you had now because I had an overlap on the left and right sides so what I'm doing is I'm trimming off some of the excess um, overlap there so that's a very thin overlap uh, but a little bit of an overlap nonetheless is there a little bit of a yes but it's not very noticeable at all which you'll see here in this quick overview of the video of the work the completed work so I'm trying to go very slow everything you can see looks nice and tight and clean and um, just giving it different angles and you can see how cool it looks here all right guys hope you found this video to be instructive and informative if you did give it a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button thanks guys